Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, a huge welcome to you. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Are you in the mood for a little romance in the form of a necklace and earring set? If you like that necklace in the intro, you're going to love today's tutorial. But I have to warn you, it's a little bit on the advanced side because we're going to be connecting some beaded components. And usually that's not a difficult job, but the necklace has some beaded swags that are going to be a little tricky to connect. And I'm just giving you a little warning in case you're new. But if you are new, I still want you to try it. I want you to give it a shot because you never know. It might be easy for you. Sometimes the things that I think are difficult are really not that difficult. But I have to confess that it did take me a while to design this necklace. I had to figure out the length of the swags, I had to figure out the number of beads with each beaded component, the size. It wasn't that easy and it did take me a while, but at least I got it done and now I'm going to present to you a tutorial. Hopefully you'll enjoy it, hopefully you'll get some inspiration out of it, and I'm hoping you can make your own. Sometimes people ask me if they can copy my designs, and I, you can copy it, that's why I make the tutorials. That's the whole point of my channel. I want to show you designs, I want to teach you technique, but I also want to inspire you and I want to motivate you to create your own designs as well. So even if you don't make the exact same necklace that I'm going to be showing you today, you could definitely make your own version of it. But anyway guys, I'm going to be using the beads that came in Sam's Speed Box for the month of January. The name of the box was Tennessee Treasure, and if you weren't one of the lucky ones to get the box, that's okay, you can still make the necklace. You're just going to have to compromise and find beads that are similar, and I will leave a detailed list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. If you scroll all the way down you'll see it. I'm also going to leave some timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And of course I'll leave some information on Sam's Beadbox as well. I'll leave a link down below to the website so you can go check out the bead subscription as well as the store. And before we get started let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And if you could give me a thumbs up and leave some comments down below I would really love it. And don't forget that I always model the necklace at the end of the video so stick around for that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. And here we have Sam's Speed Box for the month of January 2023. The name of this box is Tennessee Treasure. Let's go ahead and select the beads. What inspired today's necklace is this beautiful focal bead right here. This bead is called Dancing Flower and it's a Czech glass bead and the color is pink, silk and crystal with a bronze wash. It measures 16 by 20 millimeters but look how beautiful this bead is. It's absolutely gorgeous and when I first saw it I knew I had to use it. So this is going to be the focal in today's necklace. I also fell in love with these beautiful bellflower beads. The color of these beads is also pink silk and crystal mixed with a bronze wash and these measure 11 by 13 millimeters and we're going to be using five of them. I want to use these gorgeous maple leaf beads as well. The color of these is green opal with a bronze wash. They measure 10.5 by 13 millimeters and we're going to be using five of them. And I do want to use these five polish rounds. These are four millimeters in size and the color is peridot with AB finish. I want to use these as well. These are also five polish faceted rounds. The color is pink crystal with AB finish and these measure seven millimeters in size. And there's one more item we're going to be using. I love these melon beads. The color of these beads is pink bronze luster and these measure 5.5 millimeters in size. And did you notice that I placed all of the beads that I'm going to be using on the top? I didn't want to go digging through the box looking for things. But anyway guys this box was absolutely amazing and I wish I could use everything but that would mean that I would have to make several necklaces and we're not going to do that today. So that's all we're going to use from this box for today. I'm going to be using some craft wire and this is by Beadsmith. The color is antique copper and it's 20 gauge and you can use any brand. I'm really not that particular about the brand but this one is tarnish resistant. I have a few more items here. I have a lobster claw clasp. I have two six millimeter jump rings and these are in an antique copper color. I'm also going to be using some ball head pins. We're going to use these on the maple leaves and since these are so thin we're going to do some wrap loops. So now that we've selected the beads I'm going to remove a few beads from the strands and we'll get started. I'm going to start by creating some dangles and as you can see I've arranged the beads the way I want them. And a little warning guys, this necklace is actually a little bit fiddly to make and the reason I say that is because later on when we go to assemble everything and connect the swags you're going to find out that it's pretty fiddly. Another thing you could do to make it easier, instead of connecting beaded chain or beaded swags you can just use regular chain. So the first thing we're going to do is place the maple leaves on ball head pins. Here are my ball head pins. So let me show you how to do one. I'm simply going to thread it onto my ball head pin like this. You want the pointed part of the leaf facing down 
and now using some round nose pliers I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the leaf like this, kink it, switch to this portion of my pliers and you're going to have to decide how big you want your loops. The reason I'm placing mine here is because I know how big I want my loops and everybody's pliers are different. So now I'm going to grab the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap that tail to the back just like that. And now I'm going to grab my loop with some skinny pliers and with another set of pliers I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. You can do as many wraps as you want to by the way. You just want to make sure you cover up the pin. So I'm doing three wraps here. And now using my flush cutters, I'm going to snip off the excess pin. And you do want to tuck in any little end that's sticking out. You don't want anything sticking out. So this is what you should have. I'm going to do the exact same thing now to the other four. Okay, as you can see, I've mounted all the leaves on ball head pins and now we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to mount the rest of these beads on 20 gauge wire and we're going to be doing some simple loops. Here's my 20 gauge wire. It's a good idea to straighten it before you cut it off the spool. And I'm going to do a slightly different technique today. You're probably wondering why I have such a long piece of wire. I'll show you in just a second. Let me just straighten it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So this piece is about nine inches long and the reason it's nine inches long is because I want it to fit within the frame of the camera. If I were working by myself I'd probably use a longer piece. But this is a really cool method because this actually saves you wire. In other words you're not going to be wasting too much wire. So basically what I'm going to do is form a loop at the very top of this long piece of wire before I thread anything on. And I'm going to grab the wire at about 3 eighths of an inch down, maybe a little bit more. It all depends on how big you want your loops. Kink it, just like that. And now using some round nose pliers I'm going to grab the wire like I always do to create a simple loop. You want to make sure that it's flush and then go ahead and loop it. You do want to make sure you close your loop very well and then straighten it out if you need to. So this is what you should have. So now at this point we're going to go ahead and thread on a bead. Let's go ahead and do one of these. Bring it all the way down to where the loop is. Grab the wire at the top of the bead like this, kink it, cut it at 3 eighths of an inch again or whatever length you want. And now I'm going to grab that piece of wire like I always do for a simple loop, making sure that it's flush and I'm going to go ahead and create my second loop. And like I said before, you do want to make sure you close it and that's what you should have. It's a good idea to straighten out your loops. So you want to grab both loops with a set of pliers and make sure they're level. So there's one. And as you can see, I don't have any wastage at all. I didn't have to snip off any excess wire, so that's nice. It is a little awkward working with such a long piece of wire. But if you don't like to waste wire, then this is the way to do it. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other two melon beads. But before I do, I want to show you how to do one of the bell flowers. It's basically the same thing. But I'm going to make these loops a little bit bigger. 
So I'm going to grab my wire at about half an inch down this time, kink it, grab it with my round nose pliers a little bit further down the barrel because I want the loop to be bigger. Loop it. Make sure it's nice and straight. Just like that. And with these we have to go in from the bottom like this so that that loop sits inside that flower. And once again I'm going to grab the wire at the top, kink it, snip off the excess leaving myself half an inch, grab the wire with my round nose pliers, make sure it's flush, loop it. I definitely want this loop to be bigger. You want to make sure that it's sitting nice and straight on top of that bell flower, just like that. Now the orientation of these loops is going to be different. This time you want them to be perpendicular. So I'm going to grab both loops like this and turn them this way so that they're perpendicular. And that's basically it. And you want to do all of the bell flowers the exact same way. And like I said before, you want to do the melon beads just like that one. And the focal bead is going to be just like that one as well. It's going to have two loops that are facing the same way. So now to save time, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the film and I'll meet you back. As you can see, I've mounted all the beads on wire. And look at this guys, I only have these two pieces of wire left. Now this one I can probably use on a small bead because it's about an inch long. And this one's going to be tossed out, this one's too small. But it's pretty amazing that this is the only wire that I'm going to be throwing out. So if you don't like to waste wire, this is a really great method to use. But it is a little bit more time consuming because you can't do things production style. You basically have to do one bead at a time from start to finish. So now we just need to assemble these dangles and that's pretty easy to do. Let me start with a center dangle. I'm simply going to open up this loop, insert the maple leaf, and close it up. And now I'm going to open up this loop, insert the melon bead, and close it up. And now I'm going to open up this loop insert the flower bead and close it up so that's the first dangle and now I'm going to connect the other four the exact same way As you can see I've mounted all the beads and I did make a little change. I decided to make the center focal a little bit shorter so I removed the melon bead. So I just have these two with a melon bead. Sometimes I'll sketch out my designs but I really don't know how it's going to turn out until I actually assemble everything. But anyway these are the five dangles that we're going to be attaching to the bottom of the necklace. So now we're going to move on to the next step. As you can see I have the peridot colored five polished rounds and these are the four millimeter sized beads. I also have a long piece of wire because I'm going to be using the same method that I used earlier and it's the same exact technique guys. I'm going to do some simple loops on each one of these beads. So let me just do one with you and then I'll do the rest off camera to save time. So just like before I'm going to grab the wire and kink it at about 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to form a loop. So I'm making sure that it's flush with my pliers and now I'm going to loop it making sure I close it really well and you want to make sure that it's straight as well. And just like before, I'm going to thread on a bead, bring it down, grab the wire at the top of the bead, kink it, cut off the excess, Grab the wire at the very tip, loop it, 
making sure that it's closed. And now I'm going to grab the loop with two pliers and make sure that they're level. So anyway, this one's done. So now I'm going to do the rest of these the exact same way. There's a total of 14 beads here and all of them are going to have loops that are facing the same way except for two. Two of the loops are going to be perpendicular and I'll explain why later on. So I'm going to do these off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've mounted all the beads on wire and I've arranged them into four separate swags as you can see. Now this is not how it's going to be assembled on the necklace. I just place them one above the other because I don't have much room on my mat. But anyway, like I said a few moments ago, two of the beads are going to have loops that are perpendicular to each other and it's going to be these two right here and all the other ones are going to be facing the same direction. So to change the orientation, let me show you how to do that. I'm sure many of you already know. I'm simply going to grab the loop with one set of plies like this and now with another set I'm going to grab the other loop and turn the loops like this. Pretty simple. Let me go ahead and do this one now. So now we need to connect the four swags and that's very easy to do. You're just going to grab a bead and now open up the loop, insert the next one and close up the loop. Let me show you again. I'm going to open up this loop, grab the next bead and close it up. And that's all there is to it. So let me go ahead and do the four sets. As you can see, I've connected all the beads. So now we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to be creating some beaded components. So let me go get the beads. So here are the beads we're going to be using for the beaded components that are going to form the strand of the necklace. As you can see, I have my piece of wire. And like I said at the beginning, you can have a piece of wire that's much longer than this. I'm keeping mine a little bit shorter because I want it to fit within the frame of the camera. And once again, this is the exact same technique as before. We're going to be forming simple loops. So let me just go ahead and do one and then I'll do the rest off camera. Once again, I'm going to kink my wire at 3 8 of an inch or however long you want, depending on the size of your loops. And now I'm going to grab the wire at the very end so that it's flush. Loop it. Make sure it's nice and straight and you want to make sure that it's closed. And now I'm going to load one of these 4mm size beads. And now one of these melon beads. And now one of these larger fire polished beads. and another melon bead and another 4 millimeter size bead. So this is what you should have. I'm going to grab the wire right by the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, cut off the excess, grab the wire with my round nose pliers, and loop it. And now I'm going to straighten out my loops. And that's the entire beaded component. And I don't know how many I'm going to need just yet because I need to figure out how long I want the necklace. But I like to wear my necklaces at the collarbone. So more than likely mine will be about 17 inches long. And this beaded component is actually pretty long. Let me show you. Mine measures almost one and a half inches long, but it all depends on how big your loops are. So that's something you're going to have to figure out. But for planning purposes, I'm going to go ahead and build myself 14 beaded components. And that way I can figure out how long I want the necklace. And if I have anything left over, I'll just use it for something else or I'll disassemble it. Keep in mind that the jump rings and the clasp are going to add another inch to the overall length. So now I'm going to do these off camera and I'll be right back. So here are my beaded components and I built 14 of them. 
Like I said before, once I assembled everything, I may not need all of them. So now that we have all the beaded components built, we're going to start assembling the necklace. And I'm going to assemble the focal part of the necklace first. And for that, I need six of these components. So let me remove the rest. And I'm going to arrange these like this. So this is the bottom of the necklace. And I'm going to be connecting the dangles like this. So this is the basic layout. Of course, it looks a little bit different because nothing's connected yet. Once we connect everything, it'll be much smaller. And you can do it in whatever steps you want to, but I find this is the easiest step. I like to connect the dangles first and then connect the swags later. So let me show you how I'm going to connect them. I'm going to open up this loop. Connect the main dangle and then close it up. So that's how it should look. And now I'm going to connect this one to that same loop. Let me give you a close up. And that's basically how we're going to connect all of them. It's very simple, guys. This is actually the easiest part of this necklace. So let me go ahead and connect the rest. As you can see, I've connected the beaded components and dangles. And you're probably wondering why I didn't open up the loop of the dangle instead of the loop of the beaded component. The reason is that for me, it's a lot easier and less confusing when I do it the way I showed you. Of course, you can certainly try doing it that way. Whatever makes it easier for you, that's what I recommend. So now comes the difficult part. We're going to attach the swags and let me show you how. One's going to go here. Another one's going to go here. Same thing on this side. So that's basically how it's going to look. And the biggest challenge with this next step is that you have to make sure that the loops are oriented properly. Because if they're not, it's not going to work out and the swags aren't going to lay properly. So let me show you which loop we're going to be attaching them to. We're going to be attaching this swag and this swag to this loop right here. It's the loop that's on top of this focal bead. Since this is a very fiddly job, I'm going to use these pliers. These are called flat nose tapered pliers or stepped pliers. And I like these because they have a two millimeter tip, which means that I can get into tight spaces. So let me go ahead and open up this loop now. And I'm going to be attaching it like this to this loop. Let me close it up. So there it is attached as you can see. Now this beaded component here is the one that has the loops that are perpendicular. And the reason I did that is because it needs to connect properly to this bead right here, the melon bead. Let me show you. This one here has loops that are vertical. This one has loops that are horizontal or parallel to the mat. This next one has loops that are vertical. And this one has one that's horizontal, parallel to the mat, and another one that's vertical. And that's the one that's going to connect to this loop right here. It's a little bit tricky. I'm going to open it up. And let me see if I can show you how to do this without blocking the view. You want to connect it just like this. Let me close up this loop. So 
So that's basically what you want. I'll do a screenshot so you can get a close up. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this loop. And now I'm going to connect it to this loop here. Let me pick it up this way so I can show you. Just like that. And now let me close it up. As you can see, I've connected this end now. So now I need to connect this one to this loop right here at the top of the melon bead. Let me see if I can pick it up. And I need to open this side. And now I'm going to connect it to this loop. And close it up. So there it is connected. Let me give you a close up. So now we're going to connect the other two. And both of these have loops that are facing the same direction. And it's critical that you connect it this way because the swags need to lay properly. So let's go ahead and open up this one now. So there's the loop and I need to connect it to this side of the loop. Just like that. Hopefully you can see it. And let me close it up. Now I just realized something, this bell flower has to have loops that are facing the same direction because this beta component needs to connect properly and that's very easy to do. I'm going to grab the loops with two pliers like this and turn them just like that. So now I should be able to connect this swag to that loop. And once again, the reason I'm doing that is because of the orientation of the loops. So this one's vertical, this one's horizontal, and this one's vertical. And that's going to connect to the loop. So let me go ahead and open it up. There it is connected. And now I'm going to close it up. So this is what it looks like so far. I think it's really cute. So now I need to connect this one. And since you've already seen this side, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the film. Tell me that's not adorable. I think it's super pretty and very romantic. So now we just need to finish the top of the necklace. Here are my beaded components. I'm simply going to open up the loop connect it to this beta component and close it up. Once again, I'm going to open up the loop, connect another one and close it up. So let me keep going. As you can see, I've connected the strands now before I connect the clasp, I'm going to take it to the mirror and see how it sits on my chest and see if I need to remove one of these beta components or make some kind of adjustment. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Well I'm back and I did end up removing a beta component from each strand. Sometimes you don't know how things are going to sit until you actually assemble everything. There are so many variables involved 
the size of your loops matter. So anyway guys, that's what I recommend you do before you attach the clasp. You want to make sure that it's the correct length for yourself. But even if you do attach the clasp, it's never too late. Here are my two jump rings. These are 6mm jump rings. And here's a lobster claw clasp. Let me go ahead and open up one of these jump rings. I'm going to connect it to this strand and close it up. And now let me open up this one. Attach the lobster claw clasp. And now I'm going to attach it to this strand. And close it up. So here's the finished necklace and I think I'm ready for spring now. You can certainly wear this one on Valentine's Day because it's so romantic. I think the colors are absolutely gorgeous. I've always loved the combination of pink and green. And I do want to model it for you, but before I do, I want to make a pair of earrings. So let me go ahead and get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the earrings. As you can see, I've already built one of them. And this is actually the beaded component that I removed from the focal dangle. So as you can see, it didn't go to waste. I have a piece of 20 gauge wire and I have a ball head pin as well. So let me show you how to assemble this earring. I'm going to mount the leaf on the ball head pin like this. And I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the leaf to form a wrap loop. Just like I did in the beginning for the dangles. I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers. And with another set, I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. And now I'm going to do a simple loop with this wire. I'm going to open it up, insert the leaf, close it up, and now I'm going to thread the flower on, just like that. Grab the wire at the top of the flower, kink it. Snip off the excess and form a loop. Just like that. And now I'm going to open it up and connect this bead. Close it up. Open up this loop. Connect the ear wire hook and close it up. So here are my two cute earrings and I think they're absolutely adorable. Let me go ahead and get the necklace. And here's the finished necklace and earring set. I'm so glad that I got through it because it was pretty fiddly. But if you pay attention to how the loops are facing, you shouldn't have any trouble. You just need to take your time and make sure that you connect everything properly. So anyway guys, I really love this necklace. I think it turned out really pretty. And now I'd like to go ahead and model it for you. So let me put it on and I'll be right back.
Well, what do you think? Do you like this one? I love this necklace. I've been getting all kinds of inspiration for romantic pieces. I think it's because Valentine's is right around the corner and also spring isn't that far away. I always get inspiration for floral necklaces around springtime, but what really makes this necklace are the beads. And I'm telling you, Sam's bead box is amazing. They always carry gorgeous beads. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own necklace. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.